nobody ever said, I can't wait for a QuickBooks class. <laughs> it's probably, uh, so I'm glad you're here because it's probably a boring and dry subject for a lot of people. So I'm glad to have you here and go through this with you tonight. Um, I will go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. And like Carolyn said, is if you can submit your questions in the chat and we'll get to them as we can um, and go from there. So let me share my screen here with you guys. And so again, welcome to QuickBooks 101. And okay, so I just want to mention that this is just educational, informational purposes. And none of this is like legal, financial, professional advice. So as we go through this and everybody may be here on different levels of their skill and what they're familiar with with QuickBooks and not familiar with QuickBooks accounting in general. So we're gonna, I'm not sure what your level is uh, in there. Um, so you can let us know um, how familiar you are with QuickBooks. If you're new, if you have never seen QuickBooks, if you're familiar with any of this at all, just let us know in the chat kind of where you are. It's nice to know where, where we're beginning. Um, so we kind of see an idea of where we're going. So a couple of quick questions is like, I'd like to know what it is you guys are looking to take away from today. It's like I said, we are all on different levels as to where we are, number one in business, uh, where we are with our finances. Uh, some people on here may be brand new, never seen QuickBooks, never heard of QuickBooks. Some people may be very familiar with it, maybe be very familiar with their accounting and they're looking to switch to QuickBooks. So it's nice to know where everybody is. So if you can kind of let us know where you guys are at on that scale, that would be great. And uh, I'm kind of at a little bit of a disadvantage because I can't see the chat window. <laughs> let me see if I can open it here. Um, and it's nice to know where you guys are on that level. So please let us know. And the other question I wanted to ask, and if you can put it in the chat, is why is it that knowing your numbers is so important? Uh, what difference does it make? I'd like to get your guys's feel for that and what your thoughts are on that. Uh, let me see, okay. Oh, we've got some, we'll go through, read some. All right, Dennis is looking for overall view. Uh, basis is how to utilize it. Uh, and that is brand new with QuickBooks. Uh, Rob is very new with QuickBooks. Let's see. John's learned QuickBooks by trial and error. Still haven't read the directions. You know, John, I actually was with you a long time ago. It's, it, it was very self-taught for me. So <laughs> fortunately with QuickBooks, it's really pretty easy to learn. And I actually like to tell people there isn't a whole lot you can screw up in QuickBooks that cannot be corrected as long as you're aware of it. So as we're looking through this and as you guys, if you decide to go get into QuickBooks, start using QuickBooks, don't be afraid to look around and don't be afraid to experiment because whatever you do, as long as you're aware of it, it can be corrected. So keep that in mind as you are Kind of venturing through and looking at it because it's uh it's it's something that is pretty simple to live and learn and you can't screw up a whole lot unless you go in and start deleting if you have an, an accountant that works for you and you go in and start deleting their work that may be a little bit harder to fix <laughs> um, so 
we have some that have seen it before, have been using it for a little while, but looking to get more experience in different things. Um, all right, looking how to set it up and use it. Uh, intermediate level on QuickBooks, perfect. Um, no experience. All right, so we have quite a few that are brand new, but we have quite a few differences on the scale. So um, let's see. Set it up. All right, so why it's no the next question is why is knowing your numbers is important? Uh, the IRS frowns on people who don't know their numbers. Very true. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, We jumped back up to the top here. Uh, it's important to know your numbers. It's the health of your business. Just jumping back to the top on me here. Sorry, guys. Uh, it tells us the health of our numbers and helps us make decisions. That's exactly right. Uh, the way I look at QuickBooks in accounting and why it's good to use it is if you know your numbers and you know the health of your business, you can let your numbers work for you because sometimes, especially in this day and age, we have different streams of revenue. Uh, sometimes we're doing a lot of different things. Uh, I would love to know what you guys do, what your business is, or what you're looking to do for business. Uh, do you have different streams of revenue? So this is where QuickBooks comes in handy, is it's good a good way to keep track of your different streams of revenue. And you can keep track of where you're making your money, where the income is coming from, um, where you're making a better, the most profit margin in your business. So it's really good to let your, you can let your numbers work for you instead of you working so hard for your numbers, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see, so we have an Etsy shop. Uh, baggy plug consumer product for women. I've never heard of that. Nice. Okay. So um, pelvic floor physical therapy practice. Nice. So we have a few different, uh, a lot of different businesses in here as well. Laser printing, engraving. Nice. So we're in this day and age. And as you can tell, I have my earphones in to kind of uh, mute out, hopefully, the dogs and everything that's going on <laughs> outside from us. And because we're in that day and age, we're in the day and age of working from home with COVID going on, a lot of stuff has shut down. And that's another reason that it's important for us to know our numbers because if there have been, a, there's been a lot of support out there for small business entrepreneurs. And one of the keys to getting, to tapping into getting that support partially was knowing your numbers. I don't know if you've heard of the PPP loans, the payroll protection plan loans. Um, the key to getting those is knowing your numbers. I can't tell you how many people we're scrambling to figure out what their profit and losses were and figure out what their numbers were so that they could apply for these loans. So I think that's one of the, I think this has been a awakening thing for us um, in showing us how important it really is for us to truly know, know what our profit and loss is to have our numbers all figured out. Um, how many people in business uh, at the end of the year uh, scramble to get all their stuff? You have a box of receipts and you're trying to scramble or you have your bank statements. So you throw it all on a Excel spreadsheet 
on December 31st, or you take your box and you take it to your accountant and end up with a big bill because they have to go through and sort through everything. So that's why it's important to know your numbers, to get it all organized now instead of waiting. Because the more organized you are now, the better off you will be at the end of the year. Here we are November 5th and, you know, how, how many of you are ready for the end of the year? How many of you have your income so and your expenses sorted? So again, COVID coming along and having some of these options out there to support us and help us that has been very eye-opening other than the year-end rush um, because you need to know these things because you're not going to be able to get loans if you don't know if you're making any money and where you're making your money. So kudos to you guys for joining us tonight because I don't know about you guys. Well, I personally like numbers. I personally like bookkeeping. Uh, that's what I do. And, but most people do not. So kudos to you guys, because I know a lot of people, this is probably the most boring thing you could be doing on a Thursday night. Is there anybody here who honestly says, yes, I get to go to a QuickBooks course tonight? <laughs> I see Crystal raising your hand. <laughs> Well, thank you, <laughs> because it's not a very common thing. <laughs> Most people don't enjoy it, don't like it, don't want anything to do with it, because most of us, when we get into business, we get into business because we like what we do. We don't get into business because we like numbers. We don't get into business because, oh, I want to spend my nights and weekends doing bookkeeping because I don't, I would rather not spend time with my family said nobody ever. <laughs> so I'm glad you guys are here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in. So awesome. We actually have a few bookkeepers here as well. That's great. I love that. Um, so my chat disappeared on me. But okay. So I wanted to get started because we do have some people who are new and not familiar with QuickBooks. Um, so here are some QuickBooks online plans um there's four there's the four different plans here you have simple start plus advanced and self-employed so here's the thing i want to tell you guys is don't go in quickbooks has a 30-day free trial that you can go in get familiar with it see what you like but make sure you pay attention to what options are available and what the different levels will do because there are some things like if you get into inventory, if you look at these different plans, the advanced is where you can, well, you can track the inventory in plus in advance, but you can't on simple start. So make sure that whatever plan you are going to use has everything available that you need to be doing with your system, to doing with your business. The other thing I want to throw out there, um, there's a few other bookkeepers and maybe they can uh, um, tell me if this is crazy or not, but I was a QuickBooks desktop user for years and years and years. And there's some things that I don't like doing on QuickBooks Online, for, for example, inventory. I find it easier on the desktop. So make sure that you know that there's other options out there, you know, you can look into the QuickBooks desktop version um, because sometimes there's more flexibility. Uh, there are some perks that are really good with QuickBooks Online that I love. And then there's some stuff that I don't like that is actually on the desktop version. There's options that it, and it makes things easier on the desktop version that you don't have available on QuickBooks Online. And the other thing I wanna throw out there is on these plans, Typically they do, and I'm, I'm, I think it changes, so don't quote me on this, but typically when you sign up for QuickBooks Online 
they throw out some 50% off thing to get you to sign up for them. And it's like for six months. Uh, if you're going to be working with a bookkeeper or with an accountant and you're going to be doing QuickBooks online, sometimes you can save money by doing your QuickBooks through your bookkeeper or your accountant. So keep that in mind if you are going to be looking for support. If Because some people, they don't want to know anything about this. They want to give you somebody their, their work, their, their receipts, their invoices, and you give me back my profit and loss. So there's people out there that do that. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these plans. So. Okay, so basically you're gonna go through and you are going to pick your plan. You'll sign up for your 30 day trial. I highly recommend you just do the 30 day trial. See what you like before you actually sign up, give them your credit card and so on. So you've picked your plan, you're setting up your QuickBooks. So it, there is basically a step-by-step -step to take you through setting it up. I'm not showing you the whole setup because we only have two hours. I don't want to spend waste time on showing you the setup because it does take you step by step. What's your legal business name? What industry are you in? Uh, for here, it, it says grass, graphic design, plumbing. There's all sorts of different industries that it shows up there. And the reason it asks you is because it helps guide your chart of accounts. They have a set chart of accounts in QuickBooks that they assign you the typical that most companies would use. And sometimes they're based on those industries. So you'll fill that in. And like I said, it takes you through step by step. It'll ask you your address. It'll ask you your federal ID number. So go through those steps. It'll help you link your bank accounts to QuickBooks. So now if you're like me, you go through, you get started, you start setting up this stuff, you know, what you want to do, all of that. You start setting that up and something happens, you have to step away and now you're, you've lost that setup. Okay. So what happens, that's not, that's okay. So what happens is what you're looking at now is the QuickBooks dashboard and the settings. So if you go into QuickBooks, you open it up, this is, you click on this dashboard, that that's what you're going to see. Um, so you click on the dashboard and here's what you're, what I did to show you guys is that I, I went in and set up a 30 day trial. So this is a brand new company. So this is what you see when you get started. Okay, so there's, your invoices show up there, your expenses. So when you're working in your business and you have a lot of stuff in there, you're gonna show up invoices. It's gonna show you what's past due. It's gonna show you what's paid. It's gonna show expenses. It's gonna show your bank accounts. So we'll see more of that a little bit later too. Plus you also have a lot of videos in, that show you, and there's a lot of support in QuickBooks, which is really good. You can. Google just about anything you want to do in QuickBooks. And if you can't find the video in QuickBooks itself, you can find a video on YouTube. It'll show you just about anything you're going to want to do. So don't be afraid to look and don't be afraid to look around and see things. Okay, so this is the dashboard, just so you're familiar with this. And then, okay, so up here in this corner is your settings. So you've gone through, you've set up some stuff when you went through the steps. Uh, there's some things that you didn't set up or something has changed. So up in this corner is where the settings is. Okay, so you click on that settings button and here's the screen that pops up. And here's where you can make changes to a lot of, to, to your accounts and your settings. You can manage your users, uh, your chart of accounts. And I'm not 
this isn't the only place you can find some of this stuff, but you can look down through and there's a lot of tools and stuff here as well. So, okay. So your address has changed or you have a PO box and you didn't before. So you wanna change that. So you come up here, you hit your settings. You come over here and you click on your account and settings. And then it brings up this window here. So here's your company. You can add your logo there, your company name. You can edit your legal name, your employer ID number. You can edit what industry you're in. Uh, for the tax form, it'll ask you if you're the sole proprietor and what your, when you do your tax return, what schedule it would be. Uh, your email information. Now, this is the information that's going to show up on your invoices when you're invoicing people. Um, so oftentimes, you may not even realize whether it's right or wrong until you go to do an invoice and you realize, oh, crud, I forgot this. So that's where you can make those adjustments and you can change your company information. So, okay. So also in your settings, uh, I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but over here you have your billing and subscription. So let's say you're changing your credit card that you're paying with, this is where you would do it. Your usage, that just shows how much usage you have. But here's where your sales, um, your preferences that you want to use for your company because it's different for a lot of people. So in this sales box, you have your preferred invoice, ter invoice terms, net 30 days, due upon receipt, whatever that would look like. Um, if you do shipping, that would be so shipping shows up on your invoice, uh, custom transaction numbers, uh, service date, Discount is something that oftentimes we do. Uh, it, this is where you would turn that on and off. So you'll see it a little bit more in a minute, but this is where you need to have this say on if you wanna be able to offer discounts on your invoices. Uh, tips, I don't know if we have anybody in restaurant that would have a tip account for you. Products and services. Do you want to show product service columns on your sales form? Uh, the SKU column, track quantity and price rate. So tip, those are things that are going to show up on your invoice. All right, late fees. Um, do you are you going to charge people late fees? So. Those are the different options you have for your uh, invoices. Okay, now payments. There's a nice little feature with QuickBooks. And with, whoops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to go. So you can set up your payments through QuickBooks. Uh, if you want to accept credit cards, I don't know if anybody here accepts credit cards you can go through a credit card processor, you can go through Square, you can go through Stripe. There's so many different credit card options out there. QuickBooks has its own payment options where you can set up payments to collect through QuickBooks. Um, definitely look at your options. There's so many different things out there. I'm gonna tell you average, it's about 3% to take credit cards. So here is where you would go to set up to accept payments, okay? So again, this is in that settings uh, that was up in the top corner, that gear, I guess let's, that gear up there, you click on the settings gear and this is where you would find the payments, okay? So you click on that payments tab and here's where you set that up. So what they'll do is they'll ask you your business information um, and where do you want the deposit money, the money deposited into. So they'll ask for your bank account information so they can pay you. And you're gonna have that no matter who you use for a credit card program. All right. 
So let me see if I can get to the chat again and see if we have any questions. Sorry, guys, it was up here and I don't know how to get it back. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and keep going. All right. Okay, the last tab for the account in the settings is your advanced settings. This is where you're going to set up your fiscal year, uh, accrual or cash basis for accounting. I don't know if you guys, are you guys familiar with that? Um, really quick, cash basis is the income counts when you get it, when you collect the money, your expenses count when you pay the money. Accrual basis counts when you issue an invoice, it's considered income. When you occur the expense, whether you've paid it or not, that's when it counts for your profit and loss for accrual. Now, as far as this goes, I would refer to your accountant, whether you decide whether you want to do cash or accrual basis. I know a lot of us in small business, if you don't have accounts payable and you don't have accounts receivable, you're pretty much a cash accounting method anyways. Um, but that's something that's really good to talk to an accountant on. Again, there's a difference between a bookkeeper and an accountant. The bookkeeper is, and the way I like to put that is the bookkeeper is the person that is doing the day in, day out financials. And the accountant is the person that you're going to take all of your stuff to at the end of the year and say, here it is, make, make something happen. <laughs> so that is something that you would you would refer to your accountant on something like that to make sure that your, sorry about that. I'm trying to pull up the chat in case anybody has any questions. <laughs> um, so anyways, refer to your accountant whether you wanna do the accrual or cash basis. Um, typically small business, I think a lot do cash, but that's something you definitely wanna look into further. Uh, your company type. Now here is something else that was asked to um, share is chart of accounts and being able to enable account numbers. Some people use account numbers, some people do not. I think a lot of that is a preference uh, and maybe again, something to refer to your accountant on. Um, but this is where you would turn that on and off. If you look over here, that's where you would click to turn that on. Okay, so that's something I wanted to make aware. Here's, um, okay, your currency, United States dollars is what I would assume everybody on here would be using. Uh, automatically applying credits, pre-filling your previously entered content. If you are working with um, somebody, and so you have a vendor, that does the same thing for you every time you work with them. This is nice to have because it auto fills in some of the information for you. So the next time you do a enter a bill for them, it's gonna auto fill all the information from the last time you entered a bill from them. So that's nice to have on. Uh, so you have your date, your number format. So this is where you're gonna look at some of the more advanced settings. And again, that's you'll find this with the gear up in the upper right corner. All right. So before we go any further, let's pause this. All right. All right. Okay. Chart of accounts. Um, does everybody here know what a chart of accounts is? Oh, I lost my screen. Okay. So I have a no. Um, okay. 
Perfect. All right. So we have some yes and we have some no. So basically your chart of accounts is a list of every account that's in your general ledger of your accounting system. The way I look at your chart of accounts is kind of the blueprint for your business because it design, it's the design of your company. Just like the blueprint of a building is the design of their building. Uh, the chart of accounts is made up of different types of accounts. And these different types of accounts are going to be used for different reports. So we'll get into reports more, but your profit and loss, that's where you see where you're making any money. Okay. And on your profit and loss, you're going to have the income accounts. You're going to have cost of goods accounts. You're going to have expenses accounts, other income, other expenses. Those are on your chart of accounts. Okay. So when you look at your balance sheet, again, you're going to have these different accounts. You're going to have assets, which consists of your bank accounts, your credit card accounts, your accounts receivable accounts, your inventory. Okay. Your liabilities accounts. That's your accounts payable which often people refer to as accounts payables, AP, accounts receivables, AR. So if you ever hear that, you know what they're talking about. Your equity accounts, those all consist of your chart of accounts, okay? And that is the blueprint of your business because I don't care what business you're in, you're gonna have income, you're gonna have most people have various income accounts. They just don't have one. So you'll have an income account for any stream of revenue that you have. Or let's say, for example, um, you have a, I'm going to say a clothing shop, okay? So you may break up your income based on types of clothing. Um, you may break it up by uh, clothing or, and then you may have jewelry, or you may have accessories. Uh, maybe you break it uh, down into jeans versus tops and dresses. So you can track the different types of income, where your income is coming from. When you take, typically, you know, when you take your stuff to the accountant at the end of the year, they don't necessarily care where your income is coming from. The IRS doesn't care necessarily how you're tracking your income. They just want to lump some of what your income is. So this is where for you, it breaks down where your income is and where you're gathering it. Like, where is it coming from? Does that make sense for you guys? Does anybody have any questions? Sorry, this is, does anybody have any questions on the chart of accounts? I apologize for the interruption, but nope, we're, seeing the, we're seeing the grid of people and not your screen. The grid, oh, well, that's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, let's get out of here. Sorry about that. All right. Well, that's why I couldn't pull up the chat either because let's see. Let me get this back up here. Thank you for letting me know that. All right. Okay, can you see it now? Nope. Okay, let's get back to... Yeah, we have your screen now. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, 
here's where I was showing the chart of accounts. Did you guys see this screen at all? Earlier, but not when you were talking about it. Okay, 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 perfect, thank you. All right, so this is where I was talking about, you have your profit and loss and it shows the different accounts that are gonna show up on your profit and loss. Here is your balance sheet that's gonna show the different accounts that show up on the balance sheet. And we're gonna get into those more, but I just wanna to touch base on those so you guys see what makes up your chart of accounts. So do you guys have any more questions on that? All right, I'm going to continue. Okay, here's where you're gonna find your chart of accounts in QuickBooks. Okay, so on your, so this is basically, I call the dashboard the home screen, okay? So, and this is where you find your dashboard. Whenever you open QuickBooks, that's typically what it's gonna open up for you. And so if you come down to the accounting and then that's where you will pull up, you can pull up your chart of accounts. So you click on there and you can pull up your individual chart of account. So like I said, when you set up your QuickBooks, it's going to assign you a chart of accounts. So here is what they have assigned so far. So inventory, you're only gonna have that chart, that account if you have inventory. Um, so again, we'll look at this a little bit more, but just so you know where to see your chart of accounts, okay? All right, so we're going to look at setting up a new account because as we were talking earlier, it's gonna give you sales. So if you look here, you'll see sales income, you'll have uncategorized income, and normally there's like a service income. So you're gonna set up your own income. Um, let's talk about a company that does plowing in the winter and they do lawn care service in the summer. So they'll set up two different income accounts, one for their snow plowing and one for their uh, lawn care. Okay, so we're gonna set up a new account. So to do that, you're in your chart of accounts and you can click up here where it says to set up a new account. Okay, so here's your account. Here is the list of all of the different account types, okay? So you're going to set up a new income account. So here's your income account. And here are the different types of income accounts that are available. I do bookkeeping. I threw bookkeeping in there as a name. Okay, then you would save and close it. There is your new income account. Okay, and that's the same for setting up an expense. It's the a same for setting up a equity account, a cost of goods account, to set up any account in your chart of accounts, that's how you would do it. Okay, so setting up products or services. I think what I wanna do is I'm going to stop sharing to see if we have any questions. How is everybody keeping up with stuff so far? Uh, Kelly says, this is nothing like my QuickBooks at work. Is it because it is an online version? Kelly, that is absolutely correct. Because the desktop and the online version are very, the basics are the same, but they're, they are different. They look different. A lot of it is different, but yes, that's why, because this is the online version and at work, you probably use the um, desktop version, I'm assuming. Uh, let's see. So Joni, which online version is that you're showing us? So this is the, um, this is the basic, uh, it's not the basic, it's the next step up. It's the, um, uh, let's see, it is the, well, then I'll tell you which one it is. It's the plus version, is the version that I'm showing you. Um, all right. Uh, 
let's see. I want to find Julie is confused the purpose of the chart of accounts. So the purpose of the chart of accounts is it's one place where you're going to find all of these accounts in the same place. So that's where all of your accounts are going to be compiled. Again, like I said, your income accounts, um, because you need a way to sort, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. So you need a one can I, place. Can I help? Somebody, sure. It's, it's kind of like categorizing your money, itemized lists of your, how your money is received and how you spend it. So you can actually look at it. You can break your items down to see which items are costing you money and which items are making you money. It actually, it just serves as a way of looking at how your money is working for you. And you really need it because your bank wants that information. You cut out, Crystal. So that was a really great description, Crystal. I could not have said that better if I tried. <laughs> I'm a teacher. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and um, she said the bank wants to see this, but the IRS will want to see, you know, they'll, they'll want to see this information as well. When you do your taxes, it's broken down into different categories. You, the way I, you can break it down even more to whatever suits your business, to whatever income you're looking at. Somebody asked, do you need a separate account for every product or service you sell? You don't need a separate account for every product or service you sell. So you may put multiple products into one account. So back to the clothing store, okay. So you're not going to set up a, a separate account for every piece of clothing that you're selling. It may be if you want to track how much income you're bringing in in dresses versus jeans. So, okay, you may have 15 different dresses, but they're all going to go to that dress income account. But you want to break it down if you have different buyers. So if you're buying stuff from um, XYZ company and then also buying dresses from ABC company, you want two different categories. So you're going to really set it up by way of the different types of services or products yes. you are selling. That's how you separate your, your chart of accounts. Yes, absolutely. All right, um, Christine, uh, you said you were totally lost. Are you feeling a little bit better? All right. All right. Uh, let's see here. Did we, I think I got to your guys's questions. All right. I'm going to continue unless you guys have any other questions. Okay. It keeps going there, but okay. So we've set start. So you see how to set up a new uh, chart of account account. Um, setting up products or services. So somebody asked about having a pro separate product, a separate account for each product or service. You don't. 
the products and services, this is where you'll break it down a little bit more. Okay. So you will, so you're at your dashboard, you have this bar over here to the left. So you click on your sales. And then you come down here, you click on products and services. Okay. So here is where you're going to enter all of that information for each product that you have. Um, so you can, here you can change type. There's service there. There's, uh, I'm trying to think of different. There's, there's different types based on, you have service, you have inventory item and non-inventory item are the three, unless you get into the more advanced um, QuickBooks online programs. Um, okay, setting up a service product, I set up, monthly reconciliation. Okay. And here's where you fill in your description, your price. And over here, over here is where you put the account that it goes to. So I set up the bookkeeping income account. So it will hit that bookkeeping income account. So when you So each item you set up, it will hit a income account based on what you're setting up. So let's. So what questions do you guys have on, on setting up a product or service? Okay. All right. Okay, let's go on. So we're going to enter a, a customer. Okay, so setting up a new customer. Over here, you have the your screen over here, you're going to click on sales again. And you're going to click on customers. Okay, so here is your customer information, their name, company, how you want their name to be show up on their invoices, address, pretty simple. Save it, you're good there. All right, so now this is your customer screen. And this is where if you need to go back and edit a customer, uh, this is where you would do that. Again, you go to your sales, your customers, you click on the customer and it brings you back to their window where you can adjust their information, just like where you set it up. Again, there's edit, it shows you their transactions and it would bring you back to the account, their uh, customer account, just like when you set it up, it'll look exactly the same. Okay, so recording sales, there's different ways to record sales. Um, we're not going to get into everything. Um, I'm gonna show you how to, you can do, we're gonna do invoicing. Uh, receiving payments, you can do a sales receipt, and you can review entries from a bank account, and then you can do a journal entry. Those are the different ways to set up to record your sales. So we'll get into each of those a little bit. Okay, so creating invoice, you're going to come up here to this new, and you're going to click on that and you're gonna click on a new invoice. Okay, here is the new invoice. So you have the customer, you just type in the information, uh, you enter your product description. And here is something else that um, I wanted to show you. This is where you are going to enter discounts. So just to have that in mind, if you're getting into where you are offering discounts, this is where you would do it. You could do discount percentage, you can do discount value. Okay. All right, so you've issued your invoice, now you want to receive a payment. So again, you come up here to this new, this bar over here on the far left, Uh, is one of your, that's where you're, you're going to use that more than probably anything else 
in QuickBooks. So you have new and you're going to receive a payment. All right, so here is again is the customer payment date method reference number and you can either do it. So there's two different options. You can do it to undeposited funds is the where it normally puts it. Or if you're only doing one check, you could just deposit it into the bank account. But if you're depositing multiple checks at once, you really want to put it into the undeposited funds account. Okay, so that's where you, you click on the invoice you want to pay or you're collecting the money for. And that's done. So now you want to deposit from your undeposited funds. Uh, let's see. So again, new, you're going to do a bank deposit. And this shows your payment that you received. Up here, you're going to click whatever bank account you're going to set up. Again, your bank account gets set up in your chart of accounts. So you choose what account you want it to go into. You choose the payments you want to apply. Okay. Uh, let's see. Kristen asked really quick, is it better to do a negative amount in a line item or to do a group discount at the bottom? Honestly, you could really do it either way. I would do the discount at the bottom. Um, you can do, like I said, you can do a dollar amount or you can do a percentage. I have seen it done both ways. Okay, entering vendors. So over here, you click on expenses, vendors. and you'll click on to set up a new vendor. All right, again, you get your vendor information window. The only big thing that's different with this than really with a customer is this business ID. So if you have to track payments for 1099s at the end of the year, you're going to need to get their information so you can enter their business ID and make sure you click that track payments for 1099s. That's really the biggest difference between customers and vendors. Edit vendors, it's the same thing. You click on the vendors, you go to expenses, vendors, it brings up your vendor window. You click on the vendor you want to edit and it just brings you back to the same screen where you enter their information or change it. Uh, Christine is asking, would independent contractors that you pay be vendors? Yes. I think in, in, in QuickBooks, uh, if you have the under payroll, you can put them under contractors. I myself throw them under vendors. I guess let me put it that way because that's what they are. They're, you're paying them money. So that's where I would track, I track the independent contractors as well. Okay, so there's Bob's burger joint that shows all of his transactions. And you edit it. Okay, recording expenses, just like with recording income, there's different ways you can record expenses. Uh, there. There are better ways than others, um, but whatever is easier for you typically is what I would suggest, um, whatever works out between you and your accountant and so on. Um, so anyways, the different ways to do that is you can enter a bill and pay it, just like with the invoices, you enter the invoice and receive the payment. You can add receipts. So this is, remember when I said earlier, there's some really nice functions that are good on QuickBooks Online versus desktop. So everybody has a cell phone. So you can, the beauty of QuickBooks Online and one of the best parts I find and I like is you can take a picture of your receipt. How many people go somewhere if they buy something and then they can't find the receipt after the fact? So when they want to have the receipt, 
to enter it or record it or to hang on to it for tax purposes in case they're audited, you can't find it. So the beauty of that is you, there's an app, you put it on your phone, you put the QuickBooks Online app on your phone. Let's see if I can open it really quick. If not, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not gonna go through, waste my time um, logging in. Anyways, you pull up the app and you can take a picture of the receipt and you can record it that way. Uh, does every restaurant you visit have to be set up as a vendor? I'm going to say no, because that is something I would add from the receipts. And then you just add it as an expense. Um, you can add from reviewing bank account entries and you can record from journal entries. So some people will go in and they will include everything as a vendor. If they go to every restaurant, if they go to I'm trying to think, every gas station, every store they go to, I typically, it's, it's, it's your preference how you want to do that. I would say no, record the expense, attach the receipt, you're good to go is what I would do. Okay. So recording expenses. Okay. Entering a bill. This is where you're going to have the most detailed information when you're recording your expenses. And some people track their bills. You enter your bills and then at the end of the week, you go ahead and you pay all your bills. Some people don't do that. It's again, it's what your comfort level is in your business. So you come up here to new and you enter a bill. You click on bill. Here is where you enter the bill. So I grabbed a vendor um, from a sample. I have a sample company. So I went to the sample company, the information's there. There's the vendor. Here's the equip, the category type. So this could be whatever your category is. For this example, it was equipment rental. Um, on occasion, you may want to make your expenses billable so you can bill them to a customer. That is where you would do this. So if you're just passing an expense along, that is where you would click this where it says billable, you would put the customer in there. And that way I'll show you how to do that later. So you have your information, terms if you have terms, your invoice number you put there, if you wanna add a description in there, And here's another really awesome feature that I love about QuickBooks Online is you can attach the copies of your receipts and your bills. That way, if you don't wanna keep the hard copies, they're in your QuickBooks. So you do that and your bill is entered, you save it. Okay, uh, paying bills. And I apologize guys, if I am going too fast. <laughs> Let me know. Um, we just have a lot to get through. <laughs> um, paying bills. Again, it seems a lot of doing the same thing over and over again, but QuickBooks is not overly difficult to use. It's just a matter of knowing where to go. So again, you want to pay your bills. You go up to new and then you click on your pay bills. Here's where it's at. So you pay your bills. So you're gonna pull your account because some people pay bills from different accounts. Some people pay bills from a credit card. So up here is where you choose where you pay the bills from. Uh, we have a question. Hi, Leanne. Yes, you, hi. You, are, you are going a little fast, but I do understand. So I just I'm wanted sorry. to know, that's okay. Will you be sharing, sharing the recording? Uh, they are doing a recording. Um, okay. I am also sharing the slides. We're going the slide to try deck. and share okay. the slideshow okay. so you can go back through and double check it. I'm not sure if they're sharing the whole recording or not. I do know that they are recording now. Okay, so, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just, I want to make sure we get through it. So if oh, you I do understand. have questions, let me know and I will try and recap it. Um, okay. Uh, we're paying a bill. 
again, make sure you choose your account number. Cause like I said, some companies pay from different accounts, credit cards, so on. And here is where you're going to choose. Uh, if you're going to print now or print later, some people will print checks, checks from QuickBooks. Some people will hand write out the checks and mail them. This is where you'll make that determination. If you're handwriting a check or a multiple checks, you'll start with your check number and you'll enter it in there. And if you are printing checks, you'll hit this print later button. So what you do is you go down through, you check the number, whatever invoices you want to pay. I'm checking that we're going to pay that invoice, we the bill we just entered. And down here at the bottom right, you have the choice to save and print, which if you're printing, that's what you will choose. Save and close. So if you've already written the checks out and all you're doing is recording them, you'll save and close it. And then there's schedule payments online, which is another feature, feature that QuickBooks offers. Okay. Uh, Kristen says, if you auto pay from your credit card, do you have to create a bill to match it? Kristen, I do not. So if you're auto paying every month from your credit card, you can uh, set up entries to, um, you can memorize an entry and have it automatically enter every month. And that's how I would do that. If you're auto paying a bill, you set it up, you do it once, you, um, if we have time at the end, I'll show you how to uh, set it up so it does it each month for you. Cause you can do that. So it's a recurring payment. I, would, I wouldn't do it every month and enter a bill. Like I said, there's, I'm gonna show you different ways to do that. So this is just the one way, it's the longest way, but it's where you get the most information. Okay. All right, and here is where you are, your next window, printing your checks. Again, make sure you say what checking account you're printing it from and the starting check number and you print. Okay, invoicing billable expenses. So if you remember, we talked about marking a bill that it's billable into what customer. And we was billing it to Jeff's Jalopies. Just because I like that name, I guess I keep choosing it. <laughs> um, okay, so over here is where it shows those billable expenses. And this is where you choose to add it to an invoice. Okay, so you click add all. It adds it to the invoice and you can save and send it. Pretty simple. Okay. Now record receipts from your phone app. So remember how I said you have the different ways. You pull up your phone, you take a picture of your receipt and this is where you record that receipt. So when you take a picture of a receipt, it doesn't automatically add it into your QuickBooks. What it does is it, it brings the copy of the receipt over here. So again, under your banking tab, you go to your receipt. Okay. So any invoice, any, I say invoice, I'm sorry, any receipt you've taken a picture of is going to show up right here. So I didn't, I don't have any because this is a sample company. Um, so basically you click on it, you tell it what account to put it to. And that's how you record from your phone receipts from your phone app. It's actually pretty simple. Okay. So recording mileage is another really neat thing you have with QuickBooks online. Um, which is pretty simple. So over here to the left, you have the mileage and it brings it up over here where you have the date, you put in the mileage, you put in your starting point, your ending point, whether it was business. 
and what it was for, and you can save it. So that is one way to do it. And the other way to check to track your trips is again an app through the phone. So I just wanted to show you this as well. So if you have QuickBooks, you can pull that up there. The other thing I do want to say this, there are other apps for tracking your mileage as well. I think I use an app called Everlance because mileage is new in QuickBooks. They haven't always, you haven't always been able to track your trips. Um, uh, I believe in the self-employed one, you have always been able to, but in this QuickBooks the version, you haven't always been able to track your mileage. So uh, let's see. Um, linking bank accounts. So this is another great feature of QuickBooks Online. Uh, every day, QuickBooks links to your bank account, brings over your transactions so that you can match them up for your bookkeeping. Again, like I said earlier, for recording income, recording expenses, this is a way you can do that, which is a lot quicker. But again, you may not have the information that you're looking for. So, okay, so on your dashboard, if you don't have your new, you don't have your accounts, you click on this connect accounts. Okay, it brings up your connect account, an account screen. So you'll enter your bank information. I didn't go through the whole thing, but basically, so this screen, you will enter your bank information. Then what it will do is it'll bring up your login screen where you'll enter your login information and your password from your bank. And then it will prompt you through it and it'll bring over the expenses and it'll bring over your basically your whole bank account. It'll bring over your transactions every day. So now I went back to the sample company. So this is what it looks like when you have your bank account linked to QuickBooks. So again, this is the dashboard. When you open up QuickBooks, this is your dashboard. And right here is where your linked bank accounts will show up. So on this company, they have a checking account, they have a savings account, they have a MasterCard, and they have a Visa. And basically, you'll click on where it says 25 to review for this bank account. You'll click on that. And that brings you to where you can review your transactions. So this is another way to record them. So here's, so here's the checking account, the savings account, the MasterCard. Um, let's see, if you get paid in multiple ways, cash, checks, PayPal, Stripe, et cetera, how do you get all of that to go into QuickBooks? So all of that will be recorded as it hits your bank account. So it, every transaction that hits your bank account will show up on the reviewed entries window. So that's where that will show up. And some things, I know Square will link to QuickBooks. Some of these things may link to QuickBooks as well. Some um, apps will link to QuickBooks for extra money. Um, that's something a little more advanced that I didn't want to get into because it's a little confusing. But to answer your question, the short and easy answer is all of those will show up when they hit your bank account. Does that answer your question, Christine? So I'll show you a little bit more. Okay. All right. So here we're under the checking and under the reviewed entries window, okay? Now review an entered deposit. So we went through earlier, we did a, we 
did an invoice, we received a payment, we did a deposit. So when you go through, this is what you'll see. You'll see all of these expenses. And so you've got a couple, let's start here. So you have a couple of deposits that are trying to hit uncategorized income. You have some expenses that are trying to hit uncategorized expenses. And then you have this other deposit that shows it has a match. If it shows it has a match, that means you've done the invoice, you've received the payment, you've done the deposit. The, you, the, it's, the information's already done. All you have to do is match it, okay? So these other things, so these other deposits, this is where, this is where I was saying you can enter a deposit from the reviewed entries. So if you only have one income account and you aren't tracking where the income is coming from, what customer it's coming from. So let's say you just have sales for an income account. You don't need a lot of information. You want to keep it basic. This is where you can add that. And I will show you that in a minute. But so, or like I said, here is the, my screen's doing all sorts of wonky things. <laughs> so here's the deposit. You've already done everything. You find the match and you add it. So that's the reviewed entered deposit. So here's the, a reviewed entered expense. So again, this is something that you've already entered it. You've already entered the expense. You've done the bill. You've paid the bill. Now you're just trying to match it up to your bank account. So there it picks it up that it matches it and you match it. it that part's really simple. Where it shows these record records found, those ones are pretty simple. The one thing I will say, because you have an option to go through and match everything, I would go through your entries one at a time because sometimes it will try and match transactions incorrectly. So always make sure that when you're matching them, you're hitting the right transactions. Okay, so categorizing an expense from the linked bank account. So this is what I was just trying to tell you about. So when you do, so here's your linked bank account. We're still in that reviewed entries window. So this is one of the ones it does not have a match for. So basically you click on this add and you click on the add and it brings up this box here where you can choose what expense you want it to hit. So here it's automatically trying to hit uncategorized expense. You can choose promotional. So then you would click on promotional and you would add it. So what kind of questions do you guys have with that? That's a little more confusing by trying, it, it's, harder to share it this way because it gets a little confusing because there's a lot of different options. So what kind of, what questions do you guys have? Oh, sorry, my screen is wonky. Uh, Crystal has, can you link your bank accounts with the desktop version? So you can bring the accounts over in the desktop version, but it's not as easy. And I believe you do it from your statement each month. Where this does it every single day, it brings over your transactions for you to match up. So if I, have I lost everybody completely? Let me know how you're doing. Julie says, so if you have a link to your bank account, you don't need to manually add everything for each sale expense. 
That is correct. However, you may not get as much detail as you're looking for. So like I said, there's different ways to enter this stuff. So yes, this is one of the ways you can enter it. So if you're okay with going in and entering your income this way, and you don't want to know all of the details, that's perfectly fine. It what It's what suits your company. So, so if I just link my business bank account, which is connected to the business debit card, I can just categorize them as they come in. Yes. Yes, that, that was basically the same question. Yes, but absolutely. But I want to make sure you guys know how to do the other stuff as well, because you're not going to do everything that way, because you may want to be invoicing your customers. You may want to send out the invoices and have them pay you right through QuickBooks. And when you do that, that's where you'll find it'll automatically connect them. So, but yes, like I said, this is one of the ways to do it. Uh, I think that option is limited in the self-employed version. It may be, I'm honestly not overly familiar with the self-employed version. So. Okay, let's do a, a check here. How's everybody doing? It is definitely a different version. It does look different. All right, so we got a good overview. Is everybody sleeping? I know how dry bookkeeping is in, in, in accounting and <laughs> it's a pretty dry thing. <laughs> It's exciting though. Okay. I think it's no, I think this is really exciting. Okay. You know, the possibilities of being able to really get a handle on, you know, business operations yeah. to a finite and being able to really understand what's happening. Yeah. This is okay. exciting. It's a lot, awesome. but I'm excited. <laughs> it is a lot. And is and to cram it into two hours, it's it we move a little quick. So I apologize for that. So I want to make sure we're still going good. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's move on then. All right. So journal entries, that is another way to enter stuff. Um, it's not the best way. I remember when I started in accounting class 20 years ago, I was told don't ever, ever, ever enter anything with a journal entry. I've been working in companies now for 20 years and they do a lot with journal entries. <laughs> so I want you guys to be familiar with that and know where to find it. Um, so again, you go up to enter a new entry and you pick up journal entry and this is something else I want to say. QuickBooks is always getting a little bit better. So this new button wasn't here, I don't know, six months ago. It used to be you had to go up to that setting here, click on that, then find what you want to add. It was, it was a nightmare. So it, they're, they're improving. So anyways, you go to the new button, you hit the journal entry, and here's your journal entry. So I just did a really quick, and when you get into journal entries, and this is probably one of the ways, things that if you're not familiar with debits and credits, this is somewhere you're going to not want to do journal entries. QuickBooks takes that out the guesswork out of whether something is a debit or a credit for you. Um, they always need to match. Again, when you do enter the bills, you don't have to know if you're debiting or crediting. If you're doing an invoice, you don't have to know if you're debiting or crediting. So this is something I don't recommend doing unless you're very familiar with debits and credits, unless you're very familiar with kind of the back end of the accounting and 
um, what all of this means, but this is where you can enter, you can enter your income, you can enter expenses, you can enter loans, you know, if you're taking out a loan for a piece of equipment. And so you have to record your loan and you have to record your asset. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of time to get into that, but I wanted to make sure you knew where to find that. Uh, and the other thing that is I love about QuickBooks Online, again, is you can attach your receipts and your hard copy backup for any of these entries. And this is where you do it down here in the bottom left. You click on it. Oh, I didn't actually mean to click on it. <laughs> Sorry. And you just download it from your computer. So again, I just want you to be familiar as to where to find that if it's something you are comfortable with and you're familiar with. All right, reports. Reporting is where you, it, that's where the nitty gritty comes from. That's where you're going to see your results. You're gonna find if you're making money, okay? You're gonna see who owes you money, who you owe money to. But again, that's only if you're entering your bills and entering invoices. You won't, the accounts receivable reports, accounts fail reports, they don't, won't mean anything to you if you're just entering stuff from your bank account, from the reviewed entries. Um, so profit and loss, balance sheet, accounts receivable reports, accounts fail reports. They're your most common ones. All right. So over here to the left, you're gonna click on reports. Here is your reports window, okay? Favorite reports that's gonna show up is your accounts receivable aging, your balance sheet, and your profit and loss. Um, okay, Tiffany asks, what is the difference in entering a loan in a journal entry or the chart of accounts? So the journal entry is what is going to record it into the chart of accounts. That's how you get it to the chart of accounts. Because you don't, um, <laughs> so, because you, you don't go to the chart of accounts and just throw something in there. You have to get it there either through the invoicing, through these one, one of these ways of entering it. So the journal entry is actually how you get it to record, be recorded into the chart of accounts. Um, okay, back to reports. So we're going to take a look at your profit and loss. Um, okay, good. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, all right, we're gonna look at your profit and loss, okay? Are you guys familiar with, the, with what the profit and loss is? please let me know if you are. So basically the profit and loss is gonna show you whether you're making an income or not. So in the profit and loss, you can choose dates, you can change the dates, you can do year to date, you can do monthly, um, but you, you can do it how you can do over a few months, however you want. So basically you can enter your dates and here's your income. So we were talking about your accounts earlier and having different income accounts. So this company has a design income. They have their landscaping services. They have job materials. And then they have sub income accounts. So your fountains and garden lightning, your plants and soils, you know, so these are where the different income accounts come into play. So you know where your income is coming from. Labor, installation, maintenance and repair. Okay, so here is the total income that they've made for their time frame. And again, this is just a sample company that was on QuickBooks. So, <laughs> um, so their to that's their total income of all of the income they've brought in. Okay, and whoops, here is your cost of goods. Oh, I apologize. I keep scrolling to the next window. And then it is your gross profit. 
So that is your profit before any expenses have come out. That's where your gross profit is. Okay. So now we're going to look at the bottom half of the. So the next portion of the PL is your expenses. And here are all the different accounts and the accounts you set up that fit in with what you want to keep track of with your company, where you want to categorize your expenses. So they categorize job expenses, job materials, legal and professional fees, office expenses. So again, that's going to look different for everybody. So QuickBooks has a base chart of accounts, but this is where you add in accounts for what you want to track. Okay, so you have your expenses, there's the total expenses, and then the net operating income. So that would be what you would be made if this was your company, that would be what your income is. Okay, next is the balance sheet. Again, your balance sheet, and I'm, I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time on this because we don't have a lot of time and I want to leave time for questions. Um, so your balance sheet is basically your assets, which is anything you own. It's your bank accounts, your accounts receivable, the money people owe you, your inventory, any equipment that you own would be considered an asset. Um, but this is the stuff that you own. So here's fixed assets with your truck. So there's the total assets. That's the first half of the balance sheet. And the next half of the balance sheet is your liabilities and your equity. So your assets are going to equal your liabilities and your equity. Your liabilities is anybody you owe money to, any of your accounts payable, your credit card balances, any loans, notes payable, those are your liabilities. And the equity is what you have put into your business as an owner. So that's something that you would typically have for your accountant at the end of the year. So at the end of the year, you need this stuff, you go to QuickBooks, you print out or export your profit and loss, your balance sheet. Uh, sometimes they'll want your full GL and, and more, but you'll have it there, okay? All right. So again, reports, a couple other reports. I, I did not open these to show you, but you have the accounts receivable reports. That's where if you're invoicing customers, this is where you'll track who owes you money is the accounts receivable aging summary. But there's a lot of different reports you can use, but that's going to be the important one. So you're tracking who owes you money. Okay. Next is the vendor reports. Uh, vendor reports, one I use very often is the unpaid bills report. If you're somebody who is entering your bills as they come in and paying them once a week or whatever, the unpaid bills is a report. You export it. You see all the bills that are due. So you can choose which ones you want to pay. You'll use these reports for 1099s at the end of the year. So there's a lot of interesting reports that, that will come in handy for you to look at. I didn't, didn't, we don't have the time to really explore all of them, but I wanted to make you aware that, that they are there. Okay. Let's see, I think we're getting close to, okay. Uh, any questions on reports? Let me ask that. Any questions on the profit and loss or the balance sheet? Okay, are we still, is everyone still there? <laughs> <laughs> okay so what questions can, do you have about everything or anything you want to look at a little bit better 
or go over again if you don't have any immediate questions. Because we I did go through stuff to try and squeeze it into the time frame. Because I know some of it I went through pretty quick. See if I can see everybody. Everybody should take your uh, camera off if we're if you can and let's so we can see everybody. Okay, I'd be interested in seeing the self-employed portion. Crystal, unfortunately, I um I didn't download the self-employed portion. Um, but it's very simple. If you go to QuickBooks Online, you can do the 30 day trial. And it's very easy to explore and take a look at it. Um, a lot of the features are similar. They're not the same, but they are similar. So, but that's what I would recommend because I just did the, the one for everyone to, more likely that I thought everybody would use. So um, is there a way to create a sales receipt? There is a way to create a sales receipt. And it is very similar to the invoice. If you hold on a second. Um, let's do this. Give me a second here. All right, I am going to, all right, before I do that, does it automatically print out 1099s? It does not automatically print out 1099s. Uh, there is, you have the reports for doing the 1099s. Um, let me show you. Let me get to that in just a second. Let me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen again. And I've actually opened, um, I've actually opened QuickBooks up. So I wanna share that screen and I'll show you how to do the sales receipt because I did not do a slide on that. All right, let's see here. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is so here's the dashboard. This is a brand new company. I did it just for the 30 day trial. So if you come up here to new and here again, your customers, there's your invoice, receive payment, a credit memo, estimates, they're all there. So sales receipt, okay? So you click on that, it brings up your sales receipt. So I had one customer in here, right? So here's JD Construction. See the sales receipt's nice because it cuts out the invoice and the going back in and receiving the payment. So it does cut that out. Um, so you have cash, check, credit card for payment method. If you wanna put a check number in there where you're depositing it to, whether you're doing it to your bank account or undeposited funds. I'll throw this in here so you can see. Oh, wait, no, I didn't have booking. I had my item that I set up was monthly reconciliation. So here's a nice other thing I'll show you really quick, okay? So I don't have this product or service in here. I can add it really quick. We'll say it's a service. So here you can fill in your information, your description, your price rate, and click an income account to bookkeeping, save and close. So I set up a whole nother product or service. Okay, I'll throw in a dollar amount. And somebody asked if you can do this for hourly. So basically you can, so you set up your, your product or your service and you do five hours at I don't know, $40 an hour. So you bill them for $200. I'm not sure if that's exactly what you were asking. Um, and 
I'm not going to send it because that's a fake email, but here's where you would send it. You can send it to an email address, send and close. I'm not going to do that, but that's what you can do. So I'm going to come down here and we'll do save and close. Um, let's see. Bear with me while I try and open the chat back up. Okay. What other questions are, okay. So the 1099s, let me see if I can answer that. So down here, so here's this report window I was showing you really quick. So there's the report, you scroll down. So if you come down here to the vendors, expenses and vendors. So here are your 1099 detail report. Let's see. I know there's more. So apparently some of the versions have more 1099 reports than the others because mine has more information available on the 1099s. So I do 1099s through a different resource. Um, I don't do them from QuickBooks. I So QuickBooks desktop is very simple to print 1099s from. Um, I and honestly did not find a good way to print them last year from QuickBooks to, um, online. You can get the information, but I didn't have any luck printing them. So, um, so Crystal, did I answer your question about billing hourly? Um, and Julie, we did the sales receipt. Uh, Deborah, I wish I had a better answer on the 1099s, <laughs> but no, it does. I'm 99% sure it does not print the 1099s automatically. Okay. What other questions do we have? Anything else you want to see while I have this QuickBooks open? that I can run through. Okay, well, I don't think we have any other questions. Um, uh, what about if you have a credit card linked and you have the transaction and it shows up on your bank statement? Um, okay, Kristen, so you're, are you asking about the payment where you're paying the credit card with your bank account and where it shows up, the payment shows up? Is that what you're asking? Okay, so um, yeah, so what happens is, oh, I don't have that other, so what happens is you have your credit card linked and you have your bank account linked. So what it'll show up on both of those. So it'll show up as a payment on the bank account and it'll show it up like, so it'll show up as an expense, like it's outgoing in the bank account and in your credit card. I'm wondering if there's a, if I can show you that. Um, so it'll, and it'll show the payment under the credit card. So then all you'll have to do is you'll match them or you can go to a journal entry and enter it in journal entry. Talk a little bit about what a journal entry actually is and why someone would need that. Um, so a journal entry uh, which is why I was really hesitant of even showing the journal entries, but um, 
So basically, whenever you do any entry in accounting, you have a debit and you have a credit. So the journal entry is just a, an easier, I don't want to say easier, it's just another way of recording an entry. Um, I myself like using journal entries because it's easy and you know, kind of whip through them. But you, like I said, you don't get a lot of information from them. Um, so the only time I have ever needed to do a journal entry that you couldn't do through an invoice or through the expenses, through bills or whatnot is comes in, it comes in handy when you want to record a, like if you purchase a vehicle and you get a loan out. So you have to record that asset. So it shows up in your balance sheet and the loan shows up as well. So that's one place. Um, oh, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. <laughs> I was gonna try and do it really quick. So that's it. That's a really the big thing I can say about the journal entry is it's just an, a way to easily record an entry where you have you have the debit, you have the credit. It's easy. You don't have to go through and do a lot like the multiple entries. You don't have to go in and do the invoice, do the. Um, but then again, you can do that with the. Um, you can do that with the reviewing of the entries from the bank account. So there really isn't a lot where you have to do a journal entry. It's like I said, it's just another way of doing it. And I wanted to share it for people who were familiar with it. And I did not do a great job answering your question. <laughs> Okay, well, that thank you, because I, I don't know if I really did, but thank you for that. <laughs> Anything else? Because we are getting a little bit low on time as well. Okay, I think we are all set. So I can turn it back over. Surely, and um, so I'm a new face on here. Um, I'm Megan Florkowski. I'm the director of the Wise Women's Business Center. Carolyn got us kicked off. And most importantly, Leanne, I just want to say thank you. I don't know if Carolyn mentioned that Leanne did this um, as a volunteer for the center because we had so many requests that were coming in both to the Wise Women's Business Center and to the SBDC for QuickBooks specifically. Um, and this class did sell out. <laughs> so we know that there's a lot of folks that need this. Um, I do want you to make sure to email ycenter at syr.edu and I'll put the email um, in the chat box if there's anything that wasn't answered, if there are additional resources you're feeling that you need to get you where um, you need to go. But Leanne, thank you. Thank you so much for, for doing this. It was a lot of work um, that you did to put this together. Of course, and if there's anything that I can help like with a little bit help a little bit further with, I have no problem doing that. If you just need, cause we did, we went through it fast to get it all in. There was a lot to take in. <laughs> Absolutely. So have a great night, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.